NASA's lunar ambitions are slowly slipping through its fingers, not because of a lack of vision, but because of the crippling costs of its aging technologies. The Space Launch System, SLS, and the Orion spacecraft, once the cornerstones of America's return to the moon, are now at risk of being scrapped. Years of development delays and skyrocketing expenses have turned these machines into liabilities. With budget overruns threatening their very existence, NASA finds itself at a crossroads. The grand dream of returning humans to the moon is still alive. But without SLS and Orion, how can this vision survive? That's the question being asked inside space agencies and boardrooms alike, as whispers grow louder about turning to private companies for help. Among these private sector players, SpaceX continues to emerge as the most likely savior of the Artemis program. The Starship rocket, though still in development, is seen by many as the most promising solution to NASA's dilemma. However, with its first crewed lunar mission unlikely to happen before mid-2027, Starship is not a short-term answer. And yet, there's another contender within SpaceX's arsenal. One that has already proven itself repeatedly in orbital missions. That contender is Dragon. Although it was never originally designed for lunar exploration, many now see it as a possible replacement for Orion. The question is, can Dragon be adapted for deep space missions? Could it truly land on the moon? And what does the future hold for the troubled SLS and Orion programs? The Artemis program represents a bold and ambitious effort by NASA to return humans to the lunar surface more than half a century after the last Apollo mission in 1972. Its goal goes beyond mere visits. It aims to establish a permanent human presence on the moon, laying the groundwork for future manned missions to Mars. But the reality of executing this vision has been far from smooth. The program is heavily reliant on the SLS rocket and Orion spacecraft, both of which have been plagued with technical problems, design issues, and eye-watering costs. These systems were once hailed as the future of American spaceflight. Today they are frequently criticized as relics of outdated engineering processes and inefficient government contracts. Take the SLS rocket, for example. It has become notorious for repeated delays and mounting expenses. Despite over a decade of development, SLS has only managed a single launch, the Artemis I mission on November 16, 2022. That's one launch in 14 years, with billions of taxpayer dollars funneled into its production and infrastructure. Orion 2 has failed to meet expectations. Its design has barely evolved since the first concept, and it's already shown major flaws. During the Artemis I return trip, Orion's heat shield suffered significant damage, an alarming outcome that cast doubt on its safety for future crewed missions. Yet, instead of major redesigns or replacements, NASA has stuck with this same flawed shield for future flights. This decision has sparked heated debate within the space exploration community. Many experts and insiders now question the wisdom of continuing to invest in these aging technologies. The leaked details of NASA's latest budget proposal only add fuel to the fire. According to sources, the new budget would slash funding for several of Artemis's core components, including SLS, Orion, and even the Lunar Gateway Project a space station intended to orbit the moon and serve as a relay point for astronauts. Faced with these looming cuts, NASA is increasingly exploring partnerships with private space companies to keep the lunar mission alive. And when it comes to private innovation in space, no name stands out like SpaceX. While Starship remains NASA's primary pick for Artemis III's lunar landing in 2027, it's the Dragon spacecraft that has begun to generate serious buzz. Dragon has already proven itself as a reliable transport vehicle with 45 successful missions to the International Space Station. It's flown both cargo and crew missions and most importantly, it has done so cost-effectively. The average cost of a Dragon seat stands at about backslash $55 million, significantly cheaper than anything offered by traditional NASA launch systems. In terms of performance, Dragon has consistently exceeded expectations, particularly during the Polaris Dawn and Inspiration 4 missions which pushed the limits of private space travel. Compared to the spiraling costs of NASA's government-run programs, Dragon offers a compelling alternative. From 2011 to its first launch, SLS has cost taxpayers around backslash $23.8 billion, with that figure projected to climb further through 2025. Orion isn't far behind, having racked up backslash $20.4 billion since 2006. To make matters worse, an additional backslash $5.7 billion has been poured into launch infrastructure and support systems to accommodate these vehicles. In total, NASA has spent more than backslash $49 billion on the SLS program, 42.5% over the original budget estimates. 
and for all that money only one mission has taken off. It's an astronomical cost for a painfully limited return, and public frustration is starting to boil over. Given these staggering numbers, the argument for switching focus to Dragon seems all the more logical. Not only is Dragon cheaper but it's also reusable. Initially certified for just 5 missions, NASA has since updated that certification to allow for up to 15 missions per Dragon capsule. That level of reuse drives down costs even further. But it's important to note that those 15 missions are based on short duration flights in low Earth orbit. Traveling to the Moon is a completely different challenge. The vacuum between Earth and the Moon is harsh, unprotected by Earth's magnetic field. Radiation exposure is significantly higher, and so far, Dragon hasn't been tested in those conditions. In order to be truly lunar capable, the Dragon spacecraft would require extensive upgrades. Its current design isn't capable of landing on the Moon independently, it would need to dock with a separate lander, possibly one based on Starship's propulsion systems. The spacecraft would also need to be fitted with more robust radiation shielding to protect astronauts from high-energy solar and cosmic rays. Additionally, the standard Crew Dragon model can only support astronauts for about 10 days in free flight, or 210 days when docked to a space station. Lunar missions, which can last weeks or even months, would demand enhanced life support systems and significantly more onboard resources, such as food, water, oxygen, and energy. Then there's the problem of re-entry. Coming back from the moon is much more dangerous than returning from low Earth orbit. Spacecraft returning from the moon re-enter Earth's atmosphere at around 11 km per second, compared to 7.8 km per second from orbital missions. That's a massive difference in kinetic energy and heat. While Dragon's heat shield has proven durable in its past missions, it has never faced the extreme temperatures and forces generated during a lunar re-entry. Orion, on the other hand, was specifically designed for this challenge even though it hasn't performed perfectly. To make Dragon Lunar ready, its re-entry systems would also need to be reinforced. One intriguing solution has been proposed by Dr. Robert Zubrin, president of Pioneer Astronautics. Known for his bold thinking and advocacy for Mars colonization, Zubrin has suggested a modified version of the Dragon capsule, tailored for lunar landings. Dubbed the Gray Dragon, this concept was introduced in a Washington Post op-ed titled Asterisk, Send SpaceX Dragon to the Moon. Asterisk the idea is to use Dragon as the crew transport and pair it with a specialized lander, possibly derived from Starship's design. If developed properly this hybrid system could offer a cheaper, faster alternative to NASA's current plan, and one that is rooted in existing, proven technologies. Zubrin, along with rocket scientist Homer Hickam, introduced an intriguing proposal that could significantly alter the path of lunar exploration. Their plan involved using SpaceX's Operational Falcon Heavy to send a Crew Dragon spacecraft on a lunar flyby mission, and then safely return it to Earth. This first mission could be either manned or unmanned, purely to demonstrate the feasibility of the concept. Once proven, a separate Falcon Heavy could launch a lunar lander. Though this method still demands two launches, the key difference is the reusability of Falcon Heavy, an enormous cost-saving advantage over traditional expendable rockets. What makes this Gray Dragon plan stand out is how neatly it aligns with NASA's shifting strategy. Rather than relying on the traditional, expensive infrastructure, the agency is increasingly focusing on commercial partnerships that can accelerate timelines and reduce costs. If successful, this initiative could revolutionize how we return to the moon. It would be a quicker, more efficient way to explore our nearest celestial neighbor and could re-establish American leadership in space by capitalizing on the private sector's ability to innovate. Zubrin's confidence in SpaceX is clear. He sees this as a straightforward task for the company. But that's not all. Remember SpaceX has another Dragon variant? Right Dragon XL. This upgraded version is specifically designed to support NASA's Artemis program by resupplying the upcoming Lunar Gateway. With a payload capacity exceeding 5,000 kilograms, it's no lightweight. Dragon XL will launch aboard a Falcon Heavy 2, primarily acting as NASA's dependable delivery truck to lunar orbit. The supplies it carries could include sample return equipment, space suits, and other crucial materials for astronauts stationed on the gateway or working on the moon's surface. However, unlike other spacecraft, Dragon XL won't be coming back. After spending 6 to 12 months docked with the gateway, it will detach and drift off into a heliocentric orbit, forever. No parachutes, no heat shield, and no return. This makes it a more lightweight and cost-effective solution fully optimized for transporting cargo without the complexities of re-entry. But here's the catch. 
NASA's uncertain and fluctuating budget has placed the future of Dragon XL in jeopardy. That's a real pity because it's a solid design that could easily support both the Lunar Gateway and even Zubrin's Grey Dragon ambitions. Meanwhile, we can't ignore the Orion spacecraft, which Lockheed Martin hopes will carry four astronauts to the Lunar Gateway, where SpaceX's Starship HLS would then land them on the moon. Unfortunately, Orion is also under fire. After Artemis 1, its heat shield showed signs of cracking and chipping, something that triggered widespread concern. The result was a deep investigation and an unfortunate delay in the Artemis II mission, which moved from late 2024 to September 2025. NASA eventually identified the root cause but chose not to share details immediately, citing the need to release all findings at once. What's even more puzzling is NASA's decision to keep the existing heat shield design for Artemis II. Instead of redesigning or replacing it, which would require taking Orion apart and potentially delaying the mission by over a year, they've opted to slightly adjust the spacecraft's re-entry trajectory. Critics argue this is a shortcut, favoring deadlines over genuine safety improvements. And that's troubling especially because Artemis II will carry humans. Are we really willing to risk astronaut safety just to keep a schedule? Shouldn't a crewed mission demand even higher engineering standards, especially after a flaw has already been identified? Remember the June 5, 2024 mission of the Boeing Starliner? Astronauts Barry Butch, Wilmore and Sunita Sunny, Williams launched aboard the spacecraft with hopes of an eight-day stay at the International Space Station. But right after launch, they hit a snag, five of the Starliner's 28 thrusters failed during docking. That critical malfunction left the astronauts waiting in space for almost an hour before safely docking. Then came another shock, Butch and Sunny didn't return in eight days. They ended up spending a staggering 286 days on the islands after Starliner had to return to Earth without them. Their eventual ride home? SpaceX's Crew Dragon on the Crew-9 mission. Now, while they did return safely, the incident still raises concerns. What if a similar failure happens with Artemis II? How do we ensure astronauts don't face the same risks? NASA's Lori Glaze acknowledged the heat shield issue but kept the details vague. We've identified the cause but we're not sharing it yet. That doesn't exactly inspire confidence, especially when human lives are involved. Astronaut Reed Wiseman, commander of Artemis II, reassured everyone by saying, we won't launch until we know we're ready. That's good but still the pressure is on. NASA's silence may be strategic. Perhaps they want to be 100% certain before releasing anything to the public. Or maybe the findings are worse than expected, and they're buying time to plan a better fix. Whatever the case, people are starting to worry. Some say this lack of transparency is the same problem that plagued SLS, the space launch system. High cost, slow timelines and now risky engineering decisions. For a program that's supposed to carry astronauts safely to the moon and back, that's not a great look. Shouldn't we be aiming for absolute clarity and confidence at this stage? Even so, let's not lose hope. We still have time. The Artemis II launch is more than a year away. There's time to tweak designs, improve safety and test prototypes. Meanwhile, Starship's ninth test flight is on the horizon, and with each launch, the vehicle inches closer to full operational status. Once that happens, both Starship HLS and its tanker versions will be ready for lunar missions. SpaceX remains the most active and successful launch provider in the world, and with Falcon 9's reliability, there's good reason to believe we're heading toward a bright future in space. Personally, I have great confidence that we're not far from making lunar travel routine again. Whether it's Starship, Dragon, or even Orion, each system has its own strengths. Even the SLS, despite its cost, plays a role in NASA's roadmap. Together, these tools are paving the way to return astronauts to the moon, and maybe even go beyond. We just need to stay patient, support innovation, and hold space agencies accountable when needed. Because when that historic moment comes, when the next humans step onto the lunar surface, it will be one of the most beautiful and thrilling milestones of our generation. That wraps up today's episode. Thanks so much for sticking with us. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more amazing space content. We'll see you again very soon.